Hello, and welcome to this brief overview of CI 5617. Over the course of the next few minutes, I will be sharing a rationale for the course, along with the key frameworks that will guide us moving forward. Our objective in this presentation is to demonstrate the importance of bringing a focus to the role of language in teaching and learning for all teachers. We'll begin with a definition of the term multilingual learners. Multilingual learners refers to all children and youth who are or have been consistently exposed to multiple languages. It includes students known as English language learners or dual language learners who speak varieties of English or indigenous languages. Why learn about multilingual learners? Student, students for whom English is not their first language are the fastest growing subgroup of students in K-12 students and their numbers have been increasing each year. Anti-immigration bias, discrimination, and even violence against those speaking another language has also been on the rise and indicates the importance of preparing all teachers to understand and support learners for whom English is not the sole or primary language. Policies often negatively impact multilingual learners disproportionately, whether they be policies related to standardized testing, language use policies, or access to equitable education practices. Policies are often written with an assumption of full English proficiency, which can then lead to increased challenges for emergent multilingual learners. And finally, national, state, and local education leaders have recognized the need for all teachers to understand how to best support emergent multilingual learners in content area classes. To meet this need, the University of Minnesota requires that all teacher candidates have at least minimum coursework on working with multilingual learners and the state of Minnesota now requires all teachers to engage in professional learning around this topic before renewing their teaching licenses. Additionally, many districts are now seeking teachers with the knowledge, skills, and disposition to teach their content to all learners and to understand how to modify their instruction and assessment for multilingual learners, including the ability to leverage students' full language repertoire during instruction. At the federal level, the Every Student Succeed Act, ESSA, requires that states hold schools accountable for the success of English learners in attaining English language proficiency, achieving grade level content standards, graduating on time, and more. In Minnesota, this translates to over 76,000 multilingual learners enrolled in Minnesota schools last year, making up 8.5 of the student population. These states, while con these students, while concentrated in the Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan area, can be found throughout the state. This slide presents data on the primary home languages spoken by students in K-12 schools. As you can see, the top languages are Spanish, Somali, Hmong, Karen, Vietnamese, and Arabic. You will have an opportunity to learn more about these linguistic and cultural groups later in this course. Another important distinction to make is with regards to the diversity among students designated with the English learner or multilingual learner label. You will explore this further in a subsequent model, but for the sake of providing an overview, the three largest subgroups of learners are highly schooled newcomers, students sometimes referred to as long-term English learners, and students with limited formal education. Students who are also identified as English learners and receiving special education service are yet another group in these categories. It is important to stress that while these categories and labels serve a purpose for schools to identify supports and types of programs to best serve learners' needs, each student's language learning journey is complex and unique, making it important to get to know and understand them on an individual basis as we do with all of our learners. At the conclusion of the presentation, you will have an opportunity to review these terms and more by engaging in a Quizlet activity. Finally, I would like to end this presentation with an emphasis on the asset-based philosophy that undergirds this work. As you have read or will read in chapter one of our text, this means that all educators view learners as having strengths based on their multilingualism, rather than deficits for what they cannot do. 
This is also true of the WIDA framework. WIDA is a collaborative consortium of 41 states, territories, and agencies that provides the standards and assessments for multilingual learners in member states, including Minnesota. For now though, I want to emphasize the four big ideas of the framework, as seen on this slide. We will be addressing these throughout this course sequence. WIDA is closely affiliated with TESOL, Teachers of English to Speakers of Other Languages, the professional organization of English teaching worldwide. Their six principles are not only the title of our text for this course, but the framework we will use in conjunction with WIDA to contextualize our learning for your content areas. The six principles start with know your learners, and this is where the next module of this course will pick up.